This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant apostle, the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God your house to declare unto you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 tell us what the gospel is. How that Jesus Christ died by our sins, according to scripture, that he was buried, he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the broken heart, preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, set at liberty, them that are bruised. Thank God. The word is nigh thee, even in your heart, in your mouth, is the word of faith. So I preach, you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, wave in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. The heart man waveth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, there's a power of God unto salvation, everyone that believe it, the Jew verse, also to the Greek, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, just to live by his faith. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome everyone receiving this broadcast on live stream, on Roku, Apple TV, YouTube, Amen, other devices, and shortwave radio. Thank God. I apologize that my face broke is being attacked, but we're going to get through it. Amen. 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 To my right co-host, Jerry Brown. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. To my left co-host, Kathy Davidson. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. And left of you, co-host, Apostle Anthony Reese. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. And on the wire, Colorado, Kathy Curl. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank God. Let's have, what do you say, the my girls. Thank God.
45 years ago. <laughs> That's a while. In Israel, sent there by God, not knowing why I was going, simply obeyed what he told me, and that was give an offering in Fort Worth, and he sent me to Israel. That was the first I knew about it. I wasn't seeking it. Nobody told me I should be going. I didn't know anything except it wasn't too long after God told me that. And where it were, it's actually Tarrant County convention center, I believe. I got an invitation not too long after that. An invitation to go to Israel. Invitation was with from Derek and Lydia Prince. And I accepted it. Basically because I was invited. But God had a plan. He had a purpose. I found out on a Sunday morning, June 16th, 1974, at the tomb of the garden. I've gone there for church. A gentleman named Vanderhoeven was a speaker, which I've never heard. And I walked in, had a seat, looking at the tomb of the garden. Looking to my right was Golgotha. I'd never been there. Didn't know a thing about it except what I'd read. And I don't recall the service. I only recall Matt Rubin speaking, but I'm sure nothing else happened. And when he was speaking, I'm not saying at the very beginning, I'm not saying or before he started speaking. I say that because the Lord anointed me with his words, and I heard him, what he said. I was surprised when he started talking. Acts 1-8. Amen. Katie, I'm going to let you read Acts 1 8. I can quote it pretty much. I can quote all. Amen. Uh, but let's read it. Acts 1 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost part of the earth. That's it. That power has got to be the gospel. Amen. But it was an anointing that 
went on me. That the Lord spoke. But the Lord preached the gospel. Right? Amen. Amen. He said that in Luke 4. I have been anointed to preach the gospel. That's right. Amen. So, power came into my heart from up behind my chest to low in my belly. And stayed there for an hour. And the words, Acts 1 8, never left my heart. I could hear them. Never received anything just like it. But it was the Lord, His will. Now, on Tuesday night at Christ Church in Jerusalem, I was asked by Derek Prince if I'd like to speak for 10 minutes. Yes, I did. Spoke out of Joshua. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Amen. And? It was about me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. I made that proclamation. Amen. That night, me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Now, I did not know at that time that I would at the church that was 74. I was still practicing veterinary medicine. When the Lord called, anointed me. Amen. Thank God. But interesting, I made the statement to the world me and my house will serve the Lord. Amen. And this is my house. Does it say that? Yes. You didn't know how big your house was. No. I had no idea. You know where that's at? It's Joshua 24, verse 15. You want to read it? Yes. It says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods of your fathers ser whether the gods which your fathers serves that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Isn't that amazing? That was what I said. Me and my house. I believe Abraham made the proclamation, or Jesus talking to Abraham said that I know Abraham, he will command his household that's, to follow me. That's Genesis 18, 19. I just um, pulled it up. He uh, said, for I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. So, and they shall keep the way of the Lord. So there's a difference between children and household. Right. Amen. So, people that are with me have no choice but to serve the Lord. I'm not going to have a house full of unbelievers uh, seeking somebody to accept them. No. I wouldn't, I'm not there. Me and my house will serve the Lord. You know what that means? Serve the Lord. Not religion, not me, the Lord. You 
know that makes it easy for me to make that statement in Jerusalem? Man, in my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Now, thank God. I had thought that I would pray for people to be anointed. I was not right. I don't need to pray. The Lord anoints you himself. Unless he asks me to or tells me to. Now, I know for two or three days the Lord was dealing with me about anointing Terry Brown as a leader of singers and dancers. That was seven, right? Right, January 2nd of 2007. Right. That bad. KD knows she was anointed. And she was in Joplin. We, I went up to the meeting in Joplin on January 2nd. And I was sitting in the back row. I did not understand why we made the trip. Because I thought, what are we doing up here? And as you started to speak, the anointing of God fell on me like it had fallen on me when he called me to be a prophetess. It was so strong on me, I could hardly breathe. I remember thinking to myself, what do you want? What do you want? And God was speaking to me. He said, you're going to walk in what I've called you to walk in, or what I've called you to be. You're going to walk. You're going to begin to walk in what I've called you to be. And that anointing stayed on me, the whole time you were talking, I didn't hear you right away because of that. But when it started to lift, I heard you talking about prophetesses. Prophetess. Right. You know what year it was? 2007. Oh, same year. Same day. Amen. I didn't even know. Remember where God, when he anointed you? Uh, I don't. I don't know specifically. I will say this. Um, you know, when I first started listening to your tapes and there were others that were also listening, it seemed like everybody believed they were a prophet. Because <laughs> God opens your eyes to the gospel for the first time. And you get what you see because God has opened your eyes to what he's revealed to you. Uh, but that coming out of your heart because uh, you, you speaking the things of God and, and then all of a sudden people think, everybody thinks they're a prophet because now their eyes have been open to be able to see the definition of the gospel. Right. But so, so there were many that I was around that all, you know, thought that they could be a prophet. Well, I had the same thoughts. Uh, I just wasn't quite sure. I do know this, that when I first came down here and it was 2007 to speak, uh, it was in March of 2007, uh, you introduced me right up here on this set behind the pulpit and you said, I'm, I may surprise some of you about what I'm going to say and I may surprise Anthony, but he's an apostle. Okay. And then you turned it over to me and I began speaking. That was the first time I came down here to speak. Well, that's what you are. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. What, what else we need to do? You know, you have said that you didn't know you were a prophet until you were how many years old? And uh, But after realizing you, that you were a prophet, you could see back in your life in earlier years, times even as a very young man, perhaps even as a teenager, certain things that happened in your life or certain things you could see certain things that happened that you did and you recognized that that was the prophet that was in you. It was not a ministry that had come forth fully, but it was because of that in you. And I've seen, I've recognized the same thing 
because uh, that day when you called, you said to anoint me a prophetess to lead the women and the dancing and the singing. And there are certain times, even now, it happened just a day or two ago. I was sharing a testimony, and I realized, I said, oh, my gosh. I mean, it happened in 83 or 4 before I even came here. Right. And, and I was sharing this testimony, and I realized that was the prophetess in me in those days that um, made that statement, and some things came about in another person's life as a result of that. Um, but it's so it's interesting as you look back and see, and God reveals it more and more to you by the Spirit, things throughout your life, how that impacted things in your life. Amen. Well, I tell you, God knows all of us. And he knows what he wants from all of us. It's God that makes a choice. Amen. Man can't. Amen. He sets every member in the church as it hath pleased him. There you go. As it has pleased him. Amen. And even though maybe anointed for something or, or chosen for something, called for a certain purpose, it it will may be a while. It will be a while. The Lord bringing it about. He's the only one that can bring it about by the Spirit and develop it in your life. Well, you brought this up, but I'm going to speak further on it. But I sure didn't think I was a prophet. I didn't want to be a pastor. I, I didn't want to be. One thing I could do in the flesh, I could teach. I taught veterinary medicine a lot. So teaching was easy. But I tell you, the day God told me, go to Plano, speak to the people of Plano. I said, well, what do I say? Now, God answers, answers simple uh, statements or questions with simple answers. He said, well, read where Paul and Barnabas were at Antioch. And you will understand. Now, was that large amplification telling me what a great preacher I was going to be? Amen. Amen. <laughs> you follow? Oh yes, those prophecies. You're gonna, you're gonna change. Yeah, you, you're gonna be the 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 best preacher in the whole wide world and, and your ministry is going to be in every nation and, and, and yeah, yeah, those, those prophets and prophetesses that like to prophesy. And everybody's just going to love you, oh, want to yeah. hear you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've heard this kind of stuff. I've heard those. <laughs> Amen. I tell you what, when, when, when God, you had a vision of me in 1988 of speaking to a lot of people. And, and I remember after it, you know, I went home and thought, no, how can that be? It was 1990, 91 when God called, when God, that anointing, I was at my house and God said, I want you to go back to your bedroom and I want you to read about Deborah. And God spoke to me about the prophetess Deborah. He said, this is what you are. And I remember thinking, and, and everybody's going to think I'm crazy. I might be crazy. Well, of you know, and, and that anointing stayed on me for several days. God just burning that into me. We came to a women's meeting here, and I can tell you exactly where I was sitting, which is now the nursery, and I was sitting against the west wall, and we were praying, and God started uh, delivering me, and, and that power was on me, and Dole was sitting, or he was actually on his knees in front of me, or... He had been leaning over anyway. He was, he was trying to deliver me. And God was telling me, tell him you're a prophetess. And I'm in, inside saying, 
Oh, no. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. They'll put me out of the church. They're going to say all these guys. I'm not saying it. Well, it got to be where I was about ready to break into pieces. And Doyle said, what do you need to tell me? Say it. And I said, I can't. And he said, what do you need to tell me? And I'm, sh I mean, I am. I'm shaking. I'm falling apart. And, and he said, what is it that you have to say to me? And I finally said, what was it? I think it was Miriam was a prophetess. And it just broke. And I remember you sat back on your heels. You gave me the funniest look I have ever seen you give me. What's wrong with this woman? I was about as reluctant. I was about as afraid to hear you people say what they were as I was to hear and say to them. I got you. I thought, I don't know. I, listen, if you think this job was real simple, all I did was look at it and say, yep, that's you. You're the right. That's you. That's you. No. I was, I struggled every day with this ministry because I didn't want to disobey God. Amen. I wanted to know what God wanted, not me. Right, and, and, and we didn't, I mean, I didn't do much here with that at all. In fact, you told me later, you said, I think you made a mistake. And I said, I'll lay it down. I said, I, I won't even bring it up again. All I wanted was the will of God. But I did notice something in my life in Frisco. God would have me speak things to people and they would absolutely come to pass. And, and I would keep that in my heart. You know, people would ask me questions and the Spirit of God would come out and things would happen. But I kept it quiet. And I noticed that all the gifts of 1 Corinthians 12 were working in me. But I kept it quiet. I didn't want to, you know, like you, I, I didn't want to be something I wasn't. Amen. I just wanted to obey God. But when I went to Joplin, and I told you, I was told we're going to Joplin tomorrow, and I thought, why? I've got too much to do here. Why would we go to Joplin? But that anointing came on me again up there. And it was clear God was saying, you're going to walk in what I called you to walk in. But I didn't start preaching until I think it was 14. Right. It's when you guys went to South Bend, and you told me before you left, Kathy, there's not a seat on the plane for you. Right. So, do you know? And and you said you're not going to be ministering up there. I don't have a. I don't have room for you. And I stayed home. And and that was fine. I mean, I told God if all you want me to do is do laundry, that is okay. Just don't. Just let me stay with you, Father. Let me stay with you. You know, don't take that Holy Ghost. Let me just you know keep that. And then it was in my spirit. Make that make that video. Don't sit here and, and yield to disappointment or any of that. Push forward. And I made the video. Well, is that when you you said I was anointed God, the anointing came on me in January 2nd, 2007 in yeah. Joplin. Yeah. But I didn't, the first time I really preached, I spoke with you after I came here at the pulpit many times. After 2007, I came to your house in 2009, and I joined you at the pulpit many times, spoke. I know. But preaching by myself was 14. Was it January? Yes. 2014? Yes. I made the video. That's what I was referring to. And I said, the vi first video was, what is the gospel? That's what I was referring to. Yes. Is that not where I said, now I know what to do with you? That's what you said. Oh. You, you know why? I recognize what God has done in you. Right. Amen. Thank God. Like a man came to my house once. He said, you know, he said he was a prophet. He said, you're getting ready to go in full time 
ministry, and you know it. Well, I didn't. I didn't know it. Amen. And the next day, I got a phone call from a veterinarian. said, Barb, you want to sell your x-ray autoclave? And I said, no, I don't. He said, well, I heard you did. Well, I don't. You know, that was a big temptation. Did you know it was four or five years before I needed it? Amen. And used it? Amen. That was nothing but the devil. And, and I want to tell you, the devil knows things. Amen. You, you better try the spirit whether it be of God or not. Try every spirit. Amen. Try mine. That's great. I want you to try mine. Well, God called me to be a prophetess as Deborah in 1991, 1991. I didn't step into it till much later. Yeah. You know, one thing funny, uh, you said to me, God told you to walk with me I said, well, you're already walking with me. You remember that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what God was saying. I mean, I knew that's, I knew those words. I thought, I don't understand what he's saying. But I spoke them anyway. Well, uh, I'll I tell you what. What? God is dealing with me right now, and I will say this publicly. I, I was ashamed of what God called me because I thought people would think I'd be prideful. You'd be what? I'd be prideful. Oh. But God has called me to be a prophetess. And I have prophesied for this nation and everything I've prophesied so far has come to pass. Oh, for certain God called you as a prophetess. Uh, I know that without any, I mean, I don't even entertain anything else. I've had you prophesy to me. I've had you speak to me when I was on the floor and couldn't even get up. And I'll always laugh about that day because you came over to me and started ministering to me. And within minutes, I was on my feet. And and I said, well, I've got to make a, a, a what? An audio. An audio, right. And he said, well, I'm going with you. And, and I had to laugh, I'm going with you. And if you show any weakness, I'm going to shut it down. I thought, that sounds like a prophetess. Amen. Hallelujah. What time is it? It is 23. Oh, we have 23 minutes left in the program. 23? It's 1036. I think we've said all we need to about this. Um, you know, I do want to add one thing. Yeah. What I love, you know, people, I, I see it on Facebook. You know, they'll, they'll put, I'm a prophet. I'm an apostle. Or, I'm a lady apostle. No such thing. No such thing. But you said something to me the day that, that I, I, told, I shared with you what God had done. And then and, and you came back and you said, Kathy, you know what a prophetess is? She's a servant. Said what? She's a servant. That's right. She's a servant. Amen. That's what a prophet is. That's what an apostle is. That's what a prophetess is. We're servants. And you and I were talking about this a couple days ago. Jesus at the, at the Last Supper, Jesus, getting ready to go to the cross, took off his garments, girded himself with a towel, and washed the apostles' feet. And he said, you don't understand this now, but you're going to understand it later. And he washed all the apostles' feet, and he got to Peter, and Peter said, Jesus, you can't wash my feet. And Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part in me. And Peter said, then wash my feet, my hands, and my head. 
And Jesus said, I only have to wash your feet. I have, you know, I live in the house with Doyle. We are servants. We are not only servants to God, but we are servants to God's people. Amen. And when we are called upon to pray, to, to help, that's what we do because we're servants. You know, you, you can, you can, as, as the, in the ministry that I'm in, I don't get to choose what I do during the day. I don't get to choose where I go. I don't get to choose that. I have to listen to the Spirit of God. And I have to, you know, when I think I'm going to do something else, I'm, 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 God has me ministering to somebody, or especially to Doyle. A prophet, apostle, a pastor, a teacher, an evangelist, a prophetess, and any servant of God is a servant first. I'm Amen. off my soapbox. You what? I stepped down off my soapbox. You do. I want to say, when I anointed Terry to be a leader of women, singers, and dancers, it broke something in our life. It destroyed something that needed to go. And our life changed. Yes, that anointing says in Isaiah, what is it, 1027, the anointing destroys the yoke. Right. That anointing, and you said the words that God had been dealing with you for two or three days, but you had settled it, that it's right to anoint me a prophetess to lead the women in the dancing and the singing. And that anointing change made a big change in my life just immediately. And it was really, I mean, it was, it was wonderful um, that there came changes actually in a lot of ways, but it was that anointing that, um, that made the change, that destroyed the yoke. Um, I asked you one time, you know, we talked about this a couple of times about Miriam leading the women, and uh, it, was, uh, it was not too scary, <laughs> a little bit. But being, uh, because I danced for years, to, to lead the women in dancing was not too overwhelming. But I think it was maybe in 08 that I asked you one, one time that we were talking about this, because you would tell me frequently, you're anointed a prophetess to lead the women. And, and you would even comment sometimes about we didn't really know uh, what else, if it was just that or what, or what, just seeking to understand from the Lord. And one time, uh, maybe a year later, I asked you, well, what is a prophetess? What is a prophetess? What, is, what does she do? And you made the statement, she hears uh, from God, hears God's words, hears from him, and speaks to God's people. Well, frankly, that was frightening because if you have anything in you to want to obey God, you don't want to speak anything that's not God. That's, that's a, I mean, I had a great fear. I didn't want to say, thus saith the Lord. Um, but it's been interesting to watch the Lord develop it. It's interesting to me to watch God develop it in me because he's developed things with the dancing and the worship. You know, in 10, he told me, and there was a, an anointing rested on me for five minutes, shook me for five minutes, just coming up like a Coke bottle spewing out when you shake a Coke. Amen. And you said, what's going on with you? And I told you, God just told me to put our worship on Facebook. And God started developing more with me personally and my family, but developing more with the worship and the singing then. But then it was uh, 13 that you called up one day. It was in the fall. And you said, do you think the Browns could do looking for a city and you could do that lead alto part? And I, th I thought, I don't know if I could do that or not. Sing a solo was terrifying. Um, but God has built these things over the years, so he started with the solo ministry then, built that, and then come up to this year, or maybe start in 18, you put me on the set. 
And that's when it has started coming forth of hearing God's words and speaking those to God's people. And so it just, it shows how it's over, over time. I guess it's certainly by the spirit. I guess it says your heart, you know, what's just God, how God develops it over his time and what he develops. But there's times that the words would just burn in me. They're not prophecies necessarily, but the words burn like I will burst if I don't speak. Amen. And and sure. you've heard those. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you, you certainly are an anointed singer. Amen. You hear me? You know that. Amen. What time is it? It is 1043. 1033. 43. 43. Right. Thank you. Um, I'm going to tell you this. The anointing will make a difference. Oh, yeah. I was doing a Bible study in my home. Started in 72, 73, 74. And I was in Jerusalem on the 16th of June, 74, anointed, and went home, taught my Bible study, most everybody left. I thought, here I am anointed, and they're all gone. Next Sunday, Again, everybody left but one family. The third week, they left. You know what happened? The anointing made a difference. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But did you know what happened? It was uh, just days. Different people started coming Amen. to my Bible study. I, I tell you one of the funniest ones, and, and funny to me, probably not her, but that family come, and as soon as she'd drive up and brought, she'd start shaking. Run out. she start shaking. Why? She had fear in her. God was setting her free. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that was in the 70s, before, way before you started Plano, right? Before that that what? family, the woman that said she would start shaking right when she got out of the car, that was in the 70s. Yes. The early, yeah. or earlier, mid 70s. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 70. Four or maybe five. Oh, yeah. Ch things changed. Now, when God sent me to Plano, but that changed everything. Goodness sakes, I recognized that I was a prophet. I might be a prophet, but I wasn't sure, but I was. And then I found out later that I've been a prophet ordained to the world, to the nations, before I was born. That really got me. Same as Jeremiah. That I, little by little, I could accept what God would tell me that I was. Little by little. I couldn't, I couldn't swallow all this in one hour or one day. Amen. I remember you having a difficult time with this. Was it Amos that told God, I'm no prophet, my father's no prophet, I'm a husbandman and a picker of sycamore fruit. Yeah, I told the Lord, my father's not a prophet. I don't know a prophet. He, 
to me about Amos. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Then, you know, I think there's some reluctance with me, beer. I don't know what I'm overcoming. I didn't want to mix this together with the day. But the Lord says, we mix what we want to. Doyle, no, I run this place. But I tell you, I have struggled accepting everything I am. I struggled accepting that I had the Apostle Paul's revelation. I'm going to say it. Where it says in 2 Corinthians 12 that a messenger from Satan was sent to Paul to buffet him I didn't want to say that. My heart did not want to say that. It sounded prideful to me. But when something about destroys you, you don't change. Last night, Wednesday, no, Friday, Friday and Saturday, tough days, extremely tough. The Lord has said things to me that amaze me. May 22nd, I've called you, I've chosen you, anointed you, no, chose you, sent you to the four corners of the world, of the earth, to deliver my word without fear or uh, despair. That's one thing. But then, then, he talks about other things. what my ministry is going to do. I'm going to be present in the great tribulation. That doesn't tell me when they're going to happen, when they're going to start, but I'm going to be present. And the Lord said that I'd instruct many during that period. All of this overpowers this man's heart. You grow in grace. You grow in faith. Jesus Christ, author and minister, uh, finisher of your faith. Amen. Amen. But last night I slept. Did I enjoy it? Yes. I woke up at four. Went back to sleep. Woke up at five. When I got up, I was so weak. So weak. I thought, my goodness, what is wrong with me? So weak. And the Lord reminded me. He showed me not very many weeks back I could live to be 120 years old. Yeah. But I'm weak. And the Lord says I'm going to stand you before the strong. 
and I've been doing that for over two years. But this morning, I'm so weak. Why? What is wrong? I was immediately directed to 2 Corinthians 12. Grace, my grace is sufficient. In weakness, you're made strong. Your strength is made strong. I thought there's something crazy. And God sure opened my eyes. Of my understanding. There is a messenger from Satan sent to Buffet Jew. Man, I thought, good night. Is that what this is? I knew I was reluctant to believe. Reluctant to say it. Well, I'm not speaking out of reluctance right now. I'm telling you, this messenger from Satan has beat me up a lot. Amen. And I've learned grace, speaking grace, really brings me around. So the grace, it's grace, not me. Grace, not me. God says, my grace is sufficient. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. You know, I speak this to you a lot, a number of times. I've said to you that I believed you had a messenger from Satan buffeting you. And the reason I did is you've, you've said that you have Paul's revelation. And I'm convinced of that. I, I know... Uh, just hearing you, I mean, anyone can hearing you speak publicly, but just hearing you all the time, how you live, you've got a revelation of so much of this word. And the revelation is not like anything I've ever, ever seen or heard anywhere from anyone. And, um, and if you've got the revelation that Paul had, I mean, that's the reason that he got the messenger from Satan. It says in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7, Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. Lest you be exalted because of the abundance of the revelations that he had. Amen. There was given a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. And you've said you were afraid it would be prideful to say that you had the revelation of Paul. You didn't want it to be, you didn't want to be lifted up pride. You didn't want it to even sound prideful. But it's because of the abundance of the revelations that you have the messenger from Satan buffeting you. I know what you said to me, and I'm sure you were speaking by the Spirit of God, and I just kind of push it back. I've got to stop it. i got to listen better to all of you about things that strengthen me. You follow me? Things strengthen me. Amen. Um, it's helped. I know what Terry said to me several times about the, the revelation. Amen. In, they, in yes? the New Testament, Paul wrote letters. Huh? In the New Testament, 
God had Paul write letters to the, to the Corinthians, to the Philippians, to the Thessalonians, to the Romans. And in, the, in those letters is the doctrine of God. And these last 45 years, you have, God has given you revelation. And now you have what, what is on your website, what we teach and do. But that's the doctrine that God taught you. You, through these 45 years, not just at the beginning, but all through these years because it's improved. It's gotten stronger. You've had more revelation. It, it's almost like your letter to the world because it's almost like your letter, your epistle to the world because you begin with, with uh, what is it, First Timothy or Second Timothy. Six, consider what I say and God will give you understanding. And in it, it begins with Jesus was a God and he became a man. Amen. It has the gospel in it, the gospel Amen. and its benefits. Not only just salvation, but the gospel and what the gospel brought. And not only that, it has the foundation in it. You were looking for the foundation in 1974 and God brought it to you. Well, who gave you the desire to look for the foundation? God did. Amen. And he gave it to you. 73. 73? Okay. <laughs> and in this document, it is all written. And it's not written in, in long letters of opinions. It's all scripture. 90% of that document is scripture. Right. With just a few points to point toward the scriptures. It's my life, Kathy. I know. Amen. And oh, what, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, what blesses me about this document is this is what Terry and I received in Water of Life Christian Training School. This is the first year of Water of Life Training School. This is not all the revelation. It's just some of it. Some of the beginning words. It's not all. But I tell you what, it's got, a, it's got enough that you can walk. Well, um, I have to accept where I'm at. And I do. But sometimes, this thing about Satan, he has really been on my case. A messenger. You know, I'm, the devil stood by my pillow in my bedroom. Didn't bother me a bit, but you, huh? I run right into him. Absolutely bumped him. But my body turned went and went the other way. Amen. Well, and so often you'll be under great pressure and or pain, and you'll pray for extended period of time, maybe have people pray with you, but often just praying alone, and you'll break through. And then it's not 10 minutes to your back under what seems like the same pressure. You've marveled at that. Right. A messenger sent above me is around me all the time. Yes. That, that, that's what I'm seeing. He doesn't just show up now and then. He's here. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Well, I said with this doctrine too, this doctrine being published on the internet, going to the four corners of the earth, you have challenged every religious organization on the face of the earth. Every organization. You can't even get past page one Till you have challenged after the table of contents, but that once you get in to the doctrine, page one, you've you have taken on the Catholics, the Protestants, the Baptists, the Methodists, the Pentecostals, uh, uh, every one of them. This this doctrine challenges the just the foundations of religion, what they believe, and. And some of them saying they believe the Bible. 
And yet you, you get the statement, a small statement, and then lots of verses to support. It's like Katie said, the Word of God. Amen. I'm, I'm okay. I'm working out some doubt and unbelief, some fears, and before the world, doesn't bother me. Uh, for the people to know, I don't think I believe everything. Well, I'll add one more thing to what Kathy said earlier about us uh, hearing this in our Life Christian Training School. And we got revelation of some things, but she, she or I, neither one would say we got revelation of all of that. But in no way. Amen. We did get revelation of some things, but our revelation has increased. It's grown over the years. It's grown just from reading the document. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Doyle's revelation is still increasing in things. Ours is. So don't take the document, read it one time. Think you got revelation of it. Or just because you can remember it with your mind, don't think that's revelation. Keep reading it. And, and the Spirit of God will keep giving you revelation. I learned some things just putting it together yes. for him. He and I were talking back and forth, and I would put the scriptures down, and, and I'd go back. I don't remember this. Well, this answers a question I've had for 30 years. I mean, yes. I can remember a message from the West Side when we were there in 1990. And you stood up and you opened your message with, God is continuing to deepen my revelation of the gospel. And you've been walking in that for almost 20 years at that time. And, and you said, God is continuing to deepen my revelation of the gospel. Amen. And that's what happened with this a doctrinal statement. There were things that I believed had certain scriptures that supported why, and yet this brought a deeper revelation. You, you know how, like, when God starts opening up to you about Jesus being a man, yes. you begin seeing it just everywhere, everywhere. just verse after verse after Amen. verse. Well, it's that way with with other doctrines as well. Your revelation will deepen. It's it's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's, com Amen. it's comforting. Yes. What time is it? It is 11.05. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm fine. I've been really hit hard. But I'm fine. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen. Amen. Every time it rises up against me in judgment, I have authority to condemn it in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Every time, I have authority to condemn it. Amen. In Jesus' name. And that inheritance Amen. of the righteous. Yes. Heritage of the Lord, of his servants of the Lord, and his righteousness is of him, saith the Lord. Where's that, Leslie? Is it 51? 54. Isaiah 54. It says, verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Amen. Well, thank God, I'm not looking for excuses, not apologizing, not going to. Just going to walk it out. If God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. Amen. Thank God. 
Amen. We need to do three or four three by songs and Chico. Amen. That'll get us close to eleven thirty, won't it? Is that where you want to go? Yeah. Okay. To eleven thirty. Eleven thirty. David Lamb left. Just remember that right after the messenger from Satan to buffet you is where he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Amen. 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 Thank God. Amen. I thank God for everyone that prays for me. Amen. Thank God we for see, it. When you ask for prayer, we feel it at the house. Amen. It is very appreciated. Amen. Well, I'm going to be asking later. Amen. I'm ready to sing.
sweet rose of Sharon, you're a love, you're a power, you're merciful and you're mighty, you're the redeemer of all mankind, you're the lion, the lion of Judah, you're the
shop, don't you weep? It was all part of a plan. And there in the middle of God's glorious throne, hallelujah, there stood a lamb. And they sang,
gorgeous king Greater than anything Greater, oh greater Greater, yes greater Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the world Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Grace. Mercy. Grace. Mercy. Grace, mercy, grace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God. God bless you. See six. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.